Chapter 39 to 40. A few minutes later, paying 10 billion extols just to meet this god. A voice is calm as Sea Current said. Don't you think it's a little too much, Archbishop? Not only that, you don't even tell us why you want to meet this god. It was Enel, who had no connection in behavior with his anime counterpart. Currently, they were being taken to the upper yard using an autoboat on the Milky Road. Just a few minutes ago, they had paid 10 billion extols, 1 billion belly, to get a coupon that can be used for meeting the god legally. Though Coin forgot to mention that Amon wasn't present in nervousness. Calm down, High Priest Enel. A feminine voice calmer than his answer. Let's not forget I'm the Archpriestess here, not you. Enel just stayed silent with a smile, as if he didn't mind her words. Though his internal state couldn't be said to be the same. Arg. Why? Why did that idiotic old bastard choose this little girl as the Archpriestess? Why not me? His hands shook a little, as he thought of choking the girl from behind. But he quickly disposed of these thoughts. Let's calm down. She will definitely notice with her level of mantra. For months ago, the highest rank of the priest in Burka, the archpriest, passed away. But before passing away, the old man had chosen a 17 years old little girl as the next archpriestess. Where Enel, someone who's been a priest as a whole for 20 years, and a high priest for 9 years wasn't chosen. Enel silently gritted his teeth. That old fucker. He adopted me when I killed my fucking parents and made me a priest. I lived as he wished for 20 years, and now he did this. Ugh. I should have killed him myself. While he was thinking this, the outside people just saw the calm smile on his face. Enel is a man who was abused by his parents in his childhood. It was ironic how people like that existed even in such a religious race, however. They do exist as Enel is a perfect example of that. This is where his hate for God and ambition of becoming one himself was born. As he remembered about this, his thoughts again got lost. That fruit. I hate that. My bastard parents only did what they did, because I once said how that fruit might taste like. I was a fucking kid, damn it. Enel's parents were very religious, so when they heard something like that about their god spoken by their son, they obviously took their god's side and punished him severely. That punishment wasn't a one-time thing, though. One day I will eat it whole. The seed of the thunder god's tree. I will show you, god. I will eat that thing and make you pay for my past days. Enel thought as he felt his breathing get heavy. However, soon he calmed down. However, only the archpriest can enter the church room that holds the fruit. It is also kept inside a special type of locker that can only be opened by that sword on her hand. Enel thought as he looked down at the archpriestess hand equipping a golden sword. I will kill her someday and take that fruit. Ha ha ha. Someday. While he was thinking this, Yona, the archbishop, was able to sense his thoughts to some extent. She was very nervous and scared. She never thought she would be chosen as the next archpriestess. And when she was chosen, she found out how her life is in danger. Let's calm down. Human thoughts will change one day. Priest Enel will also learn to control himself. Soon after, the six Birkins reached the upper yard's right eye, the city of gold which was 70% fixed, and people were still working on it even at this moment. This was like a heavenly sight to the priests, as they had their mouths agape. Is this the kingdom of God? Yona asked herself as she had wide open eyes that reflected the shiny city of gold. Likewise, all the priests were surprised, however, Enel was the one most affected. Looking at the glowing city ahead of him, his face had a shuddering smile. Es so beautiful. Enel's heart was beating faster than ever. What is this material? This is mine. I want T dash. SSSLT. Suddenly, he felt a sword's tip touching his throat. Priest Enel, you are letting greed take over you. It was Yona, the archpriestess who had unsheathed her sword and held it near Enel's throat. Let's not forget we are here as honorable guests. I would have punished you severely if this was Burka. Asterisk clap. Clap. Asterisk. Suddenly, they heard clapping sounds from a bit higher than their position. My my, you guys are impressive. An internal conflict? Oh well, good for you, I guess. It was a little girl with long black hair, who jumped from the middle of Giant Jack after finishing this line. Thud! A small crater was created in the ground. Showing those kinds of emotions towards our home? You'd have already died if the redhead hadn't stopped you, long-eared monkey bastard. It was Riki who said towards Enel. She had her hand on her sword as her eyes glimmered for seconds. All of the Birkins were surprised and took a step back as they felt her emotions with their mantra. Especially Enel, who almost peed his pants. Asterisk. Soon after, Duwei arrived there after feeling the clash of emotions with his own mantra. Currently, he had the most advanced observation hockey after Amon. Seeing the priests, especially Yona, he quickly went for a hug. Ha ha ha. I never thought you would visit us, little girl. Duwei said as he patted the archpriestess back. He was quite familiar with her, as he spent around half a year in Burka before. From there, he knew the girl was as pure as a cherry blossom who helped them a ton. Ignore Riki, 
She is kind of messed up in the head when Amon's not around. You can talk with me. Duay said as he canceled the hug. Hey! H. Hey! Enel and Raki shouted at the same time, though their reasons were quite different. Raki frowned and looked at Enel, while he was looking at Duay with anger-filled eyes. He was humiliated by a little girl just now. He the high priest. Though the little girl is also seemingly someone of the same status as the position of high priest, in the end, it was a little girl. And now this goofy-looking man. You are touching the archpriestess, he said calmly, with his eyes forming a glare. He was a little scared by the girl, but he knew she was weak with his mantra. Bunch of idiots. How dare they? It was then when Duwei noticed the other priests had already prepared for battle. Though Enel was dissatisfied with Yona becoming the archpriestess, he still didn't want some random weirdo to be disrespectful to her, and also used this opportunity to humiliate the mortals in front of him. Do you realize how disrespect dash? Sha. His words were cut short, as a spear scratched his cheeks and went past by. He was able to evade it at the last moment. Go. Wow, you didn't die. It was Wiper who was around 400 meters far from them. Fush. And the next second, he came in front of them, seemingly using Soru. He copied this technique from Amon, as he had seen it being utilized thousands of times before. As someone who calls himself Amon's rival, even after he became god, he never lazes off. Though his technique is technically the same, he likes to call it Heavenly Step. Wiper looked at Enel, who was double his size in the eyes with a smirk. Heh. Do you think you six are strong enough to go against us? Just who do you think we are? Ha ha ha. You dash. Enel. Enel was about to attack, but he was stopped by Yona's call. Bitch. I was doing this for you. Enel glared at her with his veins pronounced, but it soon disappeared. Aye. He closed his eyes and took a breath in. I'm sorry for acting like this, Archbishop. Enel bowed lightly, as the other priests did the same. Soon after Duay also apologized, as he didn't realize his mistake before. Both parties calmed down, though they could still feel the emotions in each other's hearts. Now, Duay was sitting at a table opposite Yona, while Wiper and Raki were behind him, with the priests standing behind the redhead. There were also many Shandians and New Gods militia glancing at them for fear, still working and fixing the ruins. So, ignoring the previous act, let's talk about what you came here for, Duay said like a professional. Since the chief is stationed on Heaven's Gate, Duay is the one who manages most things in Amon's absence. We came here to dash, Enel opened his mouth. But Yona touched his hand, indicating him to stop. I apologize again, Yona said. Actually, we came here to meet Upper Yard's god. It's because of the news we got about his wings. She said as Wiper frowned, but Raki smirked internally. She was already let know of some small details by Amon. Oh that. Yes, I guess it's a thing to pick the curiosity of the Birkins. When I was there, I did hear about the legend. Duay replied. However, don't you guys know that Amer God left for the Blue Sea six months ago? As he said this, Yona blinked and looked at the other's face. Soon her expression froze and her eyes shook. Ah, we weren't informed about this. She said as her voice got shaky and nervous. Why you see, the news is really slow in the sky, and since the God rarely comes out, so we. She involuntarily looked down at the ground. Sorry guys. Yona's hands were shaking while Enel looked at her with a glare. You didn't even ask the people outside. You wasted 10 billion stalls. This is simply blasphemous. Her body shook hearing his words, as nervousness took over her heart. I was too nervous and excited. Also, who would have ever thought a winged person would leave for the Blue Sea? She thought. Riki could notice small droplets of tears forming in her eyes. Yona has been acting as an archpriestess for only two months. She was still 17 years old. She always was unsure of doing things. Yet she presents a confident outlook to not dissatisfy her subordinates. Now everything is a mess. 10 billion is a lot. If I achieved what I came for, that money would not have wasted even a bit. B but that person isn't even here. As she was getting nervous, the other priests were looking at her disappointedly, especially Enel glaring at her back, while Duay, Wiper, and Raki just looked at each other. Um, Duay caught their attention. Since you already used the money, we won't be able to give them back, as even you should know it's a bad omen. He said as the priests stayed silent. It was a famous belief in the sky, even in Burka and Shandya, Asking for something that you gave not long ago is a bad omen that will harm both sides. Looking at them, Duay decided to propose his offer. How about this, since Archpriestess, Yona, helped us a lot in our journey in Burka, and most importantly, since you guys are respectable guests, I will make it so next time you won't have to pay. How does that sound? Both Raki and Wiper frowned upon hearing him. However, they decided to let it go. They already scammed many others like this, so they can let it go once. Mostly because it might hurt their reputation if they do the opposite, as the Birkins are a strong and influential force. No, Enel interrupted. He had enough of the games of this little girl. We need them back now. We don't care about you guys' bad omen. 
Our people also need the money. As he was trash-talking, Riki slowly started to unsheath her sword, but Duwei stopped her. Stop Riki. However, it was too late as one of the priests, Satori, had dashed towards Wiper. Hash. Though Wiper didn't care, as he also prepared for battle. A small fight broke out, as both parties were able to stop each other at last. Yona apologized and accepted the offer, then left with the others. Finally, both parties were calm as they returned to their base. Asterisk. And then they left after a small clash. Oh oh, I also injured the Enel guy's arms. If I wanted I would have cut his arms. Amon was hearing a recording sent by Riki on his tone dial. With the dial close to his ears as it was hard to hear because of the sea currents around him. The redhead was nice to do way. Also a little cute. Anyway, seeing that idiot wiper almost revealed that you will return two years later. I stopped him as they might use your absence as a fact and attack us. I told them you might return anytime, but you will definitely return before the two-year mark. Amon smiled as he heard this. Good, she's getting smarter. Yeah, the recorder time is up. All right, bye, brother. Beep. Maybe not. The long-range tone dial had sent Rakiz recording to Amon who was in the Blue Sea. The range of tone dial wasn't good enough for it to work as a telephone from this far, though luckily it can be used as a recorder still. The Scipion engineers and Bob are working on creating a tower above the giant jack that will make it possible soon enough. Every day, Riki sends a few words on what happened that day. And today, she had sent the important things that happened, which was so long that even the record time had expired. Amon smiled as he stopped the dial. He had already foreseen this before. He also knew Enel was a high priest currently, as the Shandian spies had gathered detailed information on Burka already. Amon, in fact, had a 110% guess on why the girl was here. However, things might change after Enel saw the shiny city. Hmm. But even in that case, there is zero chance of him getting the fruit before 1515. This is 1512. After all, I have everything planned. I know everything about Burka, even the time Enel goes to sleep. I know it all. It's a matter of hours to calculate such a minor thing. Anyway, I should supply more rubber suits in the sky. Amon considered sending rubber and rubber suits with the help of knock-up streams. He has done it before, and the products also reached the sky as confirmed by Chief. FHHX. Soon, a picture came out of his portable fax dial as he intensely looked at it. Besides the four priests and Enel, who had his wings still, Amon saw Yona, the red-haired archpriest. This picture was taken when the meeting was going on. Hmm. I should take more precautions. But the girl's arrival was part of the plan too. Amon said as he put the dials and photo in a small bag on his side. Then cracking his neck, he looked down in the sea and smirked. Time to hunt more pirates. Currently, he is flying over the sea. Flying over a pirate ship. I heard they have a bounty of 469 million in total. Licking his lips, Amon launched down. Fu. General POV. Stopping the tone dial. Amon looked down at the sea where a pirate ship flying a Jolly Roger with blonde long hair on a human skull was sailing. Amon has been hunting pirates for the past six months and became quite famous. Until now, he has earned around 7.6 billion belly, though this was nothing if compared to a country's wage. Putting back the dial in his bag, Amon looked down. I heard their captain is a Logia fruit user, Amon said as he gripped his right hand, wearing the sea prism glove given by Seraf. Time to get some more money. Fa. Amon was flapping his wings now and then to maintain his position in the air, as he took out some explosive dial and lightly tossed them in front of him. Bam! He used his wings like a baseball bat to hit the tossed off dials towards the ship. Asterisk bang. 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 Asterisk. As he hit all the dials, they dashed towards the ship below, roughly 1,000 meters below. The wind current drifted their path, but Amon threw them after calculating things already. Soon, the dials were about to hit the boat, however. Whoosh! A strong wind current propelled the dials away. Boom! Oof! Surprisingly, the dials were tossed away by the wind, though Amon could tell it wasn't a natural one, as the wind pressure was only at that spot. After flying for six months and trying to create his own wind version of Fishman Karate, Amon had a pretty good connection with the wind. His observation hockey's range also increased a little for this reason. With this, just now he could feel that the wind that tossed the dials away wasn't natural, obviously. So, did the Logia user eat something like air air fruit? Hmm. Amon said as he used his observation hockey, eagle vision, and acknowledged someone did manipulate the wind. That someone being a woman in her 30s with blonde hair. Heh. Using air against me, Amon looked down at them with a smirk. Ironic. Amon didn't care at all as he started to spin rapidly in the air using Jeppo, while also flapping his wings to be extra fast. Wind sword style, wind tornado. The weather didn't change, yet a tornado was formed in the middle of the clear blue sea. A storm. Ah. Run. Protect the ship. 
Soon, the defenseless pirates got their shipwrecked. Asterisk. You cough. How dare you? The captain of the Sakaki pirates, the blonde Captain Saki yelled towards Amon, the infamous Crimson Winged, though she didn't realize this fact yet. The woman had her clothes rigged and was crushed against the ship's wall, with her shoulder being penetrated with a small dagger made of sea prism stone. Amon made it after meddling with many dials, as sea prism stone is very hard to modify. Cough, remove this dagger, or I will kill you. She was yelling constantly, and while she was doing so, Amon was a bit far from her, standing on top of a dead body with an orange in his hand. Amon put the orange on the ground and looked back towards the captain. He had a heavy frown on his face. Hey, bitch. Can't you see I'm trying to concentrate here? Do you want me to- Ow, that's quite a figure you got there. Amon's frown disappeared. I didn't notice it until now. H huh. You bastard. Who do you think you are? The woman shouted as she covered her body. Though the boy in front of her didn't look bad, she would rather kill herself than giving herself to a person who killed her comrades. I'll gouge your eyes out. Anyway, ignore that. It's kind of hard to control my desires as a teenager, you see, Amon said as he yawned. Rather, tell me, how did you control the wind before? Amon said as he took a notebook. Though it seemed like he had his guard down, in reality, his wings were arched up and the feathers were pronounced, prepared to attack anyone too smart. Currently, 68 of the 80 pirates in the ship were dead. Though some were still breathing, they were unconscious. Is that even a question? The woman tried to get up but failed to do so, falling back on her butt. It's my devil fruit power. But that's not important. You free me now, dash. Asterisk pew. 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 Pew asterisk. Suddenly, she found seven blade-sharp feathers around two sides of her neck, stopping her from moving a muscle. Gulp. Why you? You are the crimson wing, Lucifer? She asked as she stopped moving completely. Aha. Uh -huh. I got Lucifer added to my name. Amon said, surprised. Fuck, I'm god and devil at the same time. Amon whispered and covered his face, and made a dramatic pose by almost falling on his back but soon he returned back to normal. Ahem. So, miss, you must have realized what type of situation you are in, correct? Answer my questions, and I will not rape you with my octopus pets. Amon said as he put his pen in the notebook. You little fucker. She was interrupted. Tell me about your devil fruit. So, Logia, steam steam fruit? Amon said. After eating, your body turned into steam, and you can now release hot air, however, can't manipulate wind slash air, or even the steam in your surroundings. Amon said. So, to simplify things, you have a steam body, and can only produce steam and control the ones you produce, correct? Yes. The woman answered silently. Hmm, pretty weak. But it will do the job. I only needed a logia, because it's intangible property. Amon wrote them down in a mixture of ancient language and English, yes. So that nobody can read it unless they are proficient at both languages. Even then, it will take hours to intercept the words. Amon then glanced at the woman who was buying her lips, seemingly thinking of ways to survive. Um, miss, calm down and answered. The woman's body shook as she looked at him. Your fruit looked like a watermelon when you first ate it, right? That's pretty cool if I must say. Amon said as he looked at a table in the middle of the deck. There were all kinds of fruit, the ones that he brought, and also the ones the ship already had. It had two watermelons too. Amon got up and slowly walked towards her. All right, thanks. You can die happily. Your devil fruit will be used by a man who will help me greatly impact history in a few years. Amon said as his sharpened wings dashed towards her neck. W wait. He stopped his wings at the last moment, though it still scratched her neck as blood trailed down. Yes? Any proposal? Amon crouched down. Why yes? Let me live, I will be your slave. She said as she had a shaking smile with sweat forming in her head. She remembered how he looked at her body a while ago. I will do anything. I'll be your sex slave if you want dash. Nope. Too late. I'm not horny anymore, Amon stood up. Sorry and goodbye he said as her expression paled. Sash. The next second, blood splattered throughout the ship, and soon the massacre came to an end. Asterisk. A few hours later, at the nearest marine base from Amon's previous position, he was seen flying with a giant bag in his hand. It contained the proof of the complete destruction of Sakaki pirates. Their Jolly Roger, a few of their iconic clothes, and the head of their captain was in it. As he landed on the gate of the base, the marines stationed as guards whispered about him. Look, he came again. This time it's the Sakaki pirates, unlucky bunch. They would have been luckier to have been captured by us, rather than die like this. Amon ignored them, as he started to walk closer through the gate, with the guards stepping back. Welcome, welcome. Amon just nodded and walked past them, as his wings started to become smaller, and they soon seemingly disappeared. So, the rumor of him being a devil fruit user is true? Damn, and here I thought he really was an angel. One of the guards said as he looked at his back. No trace of wings was left. Obviously, dumbass. 
You think having wings without eating a devil fruit is possible? Well, anyway, what fruit do you think he ate? Amon does this every time he sees an opportunity. Unlike at first when he could only make his wings go back to their original size, he can even make them smaller than a human head, as they get covered by his clothes. Maybe, one day he will even be able to turn them into tattoos on his back. Soon, a marine soldier guided Amon to the office of the captain in charge of this base. As next, Amon found himself sitting in a chair, though the chair opposite to the chair of the captain was empty. Wait a minute, I will send the captain soon, the guide marine said in a gruff voice as he went away. Amon looked around the room as the marine left. Ah, so boring. Amon released a breath and put his legs on the table as he leaned back. He then took out a mango ice cream from his bag and started to eat it. A few minutes passed, and Amon finally heard the footsteps of a person coming towards this room. And here comes the drama queen, he thought with a deadpan expression. Soon, the shadow of a woman fell on the room, as Amon looked back to the pink-haired marine captain. Oh, what's up Hinachan? it's been a long time since we met. I almost died missing you, Amon said as the girl entered the room and sat on the chair opposite to him. It's been only two days since Hina saw you the last time. Hina is annoyed by your presence. It was a 22 years old marine captain, Black Cage. Put your legs down, or Hina will put you in jail. 